This man was the first official casualty of the Second World War, but it was not a soldier. How could it happen that an innocent farmer was used to launch Germany's attack into Poland and start the war that changed the world forever? And what actually happened to this poor man? The Nazis launched a campaign to persuade the international community that Germany was the victim of Polish aggression in the days leading up to the German invasion of Poland in 1939. Adolf Hitler hoped to justify the invasion with his violence. Reports in the German press claimed that German nationals living in Poland had been tortured. However, something more eye-catching was required to persuade the world of Poland's provocation. Reinhard Heydrich, the chief of the SS, had collected a select group of SS officers at a hotel in Gliwitz in early August. He told them of a plan to arrange a series of border incidents, also known as false flag operations. By the 31st of August, German tanks had gathered on the Polish border, and the SS, with the help of the Abwehr, German intelligence, had put its plan into action. This plan involved an attack on the Customs House in Hochlinden, a German border settlement at the time, in which six Sachsenhausen concentration camp inmates were clothed in Polish uniforms and shot. A similar operation was conducted on the Pitschen Forestry Lodge. The most famous instance, however, occurred in Gliwitz. Gliwitz is currently known as Gilwitza and is located inside the borders of Poland. However, it was a German border town in 1939. The SS team had detained a 43-year-old unmarried German farmer named Franciszek Honjok the day before. To round out the deceit at Gliwitz, the SS officers disguised Honjok in a Polish uniform, assassinated him, and dumped his body at the transmission station's entrance. The Gliwitz radio radio station was designated as an important hub for propaganda distribution in 1933, and the Germans built a new transmission tower and antenna there. The 111-meter-tall timber tower is still standing today. On the evening of August 31st, 1939, a seven-man SS crew, camouflaged as Polish insurgents, stormed the transmitter station. They rushed through the Germans, grabbed a microphone, and declared in Polish, attention, this is Gliwica. The radio station is in Polish hands. Within hours, German radio stations started reporting on the Gliwitz event. They said that Polish soldiers had taken over the station and placed a body on the steps. The BBC broadcasted the following after learning of the incident. There have been rumors of a radio station being attacked in Gliwice, which is just across the Polish border in Germany. According to the German news agency, the attack occurred at 8 p.m. this evening when Poles pushed their way into the studio and began broadcasting a statement in Polish. According to reports, the Poles were overrun by German police who opened fire on them within a quarter of an hour. Several Poles have been reported slain, although the exact number is unknown. The next day, September 1, German armies invaded Poland. The Second World War had begun. After the war, during the 1945 Nuremberg trials, Alfred Naujox, the SS major in charge of organizing the incident for Heydrich, testified about Operation Himmler and the Gliwitz incident. During a meeting in Berlin, Heydrich directed Naujox to leave a body clothed in a Polish military uniform on the steps of the Gliwitz radio station in order to establish a Polish connection. The top secret operation was given a code word, grandmother died, which Heydrich used to notify Naujox via phone that the operation was about to begin. But who was Franciszek Honjak, the first martyr of World War II? And why was he arrested by the SS in order to spark World War II? Franciszek Honjak was a 43-year-old unmarried Catholic farmer and agricultural equipment dealer. He had fought on the Polish side during the Silesian uprisings that followed World War I, having been born in Upper Silesia, a border region encompassing present-day Poland in the Czech Republic in 1896. After a brief stay in Poland, he returned to Germany in 1925, where he was obliged to fight deportation back to Poland, a case he won all the way to the League of Nations in Geneva. Though his firebrand days were ended by 1939, Honjak was still well known in his native hamlet of Hohenlieben, some 10 miles, 16 kilometers, north of Gliwice and still a part of Germany at the time as an ardent supporter of the Polish cause. Honjak was captured by the SS on August 30th, 1939 in the village of Poland. After being chosen as a person who could provide proof of Polish aggression against Germany, he appears to have been chosen due to his reputation as a Polish nationalist, which stemmed from his participation in a number of local revolts against German rule in Silesia. Honjak associated closely with Silesia and Poland, according to his surviving family in Poland. 
Following his arrest, he was briefly detained at the police barracks in Byton. Honyak was given medicines to sedate him prior to the raid. He was then taken semi-conscious into the radio station, where he was shot in the head on August 31st. Honyak had been referred to as a piece of conserve or canned meat, which could be prepared ahead of time and used to show Polish involvement in the attack, according to Noyaks. The next morning, on September 1, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, which proved to be the immediate cause and the opening move of World War II. As a result, Honyak's assassination by the SS is frequently regarded as the war's first official victim. Honyak's body has not been found, and no memorial to him exists. During the Second World War, many unknown stories actually shaped the outcome of the war in various ways. The Night Witches being a sound example of women that fought in the Second World War and absolutely wreaked havoc on the German soldiers. If you want to see more, click here.